Okay, chefs, so what we're going to need this fish for is our first dish. We need two fillets off this fish for the purpose of our uh, dish that we're going to cook. Now, you're also going to use this for your yield test. So, we'll explain this in your collaborate lesson and we'll discuss um, what we need to do with this in your collaborate lesson with regards to how do we calculate yields, why do we calculate yields, and different yields from different species of fish. So, with regards to the filleting, today I want you just to focus on the filleting, but I want you to record the total weight of the fish and the usable fillet part of the fish. Now, when it comes to the waste, don't be concerned with regards to recording how much waste you've got by weight. The best way to work this out is take the usable amount and deduct that from the whole weight that was previous, okay? Because what happens is you'll lose one or two grams on the board, or wiping the board, so the best thing to do is focus on the usable part of the fish, okay? We'll discuss this in our collaborative class, so first thing we'll do is we'll, we'll prepare the fish, okay? So before and I go any further, make sure I take the weight of this fish, okay? And this fish has already been scaled? This, this fish has already been scaled and gutted, so it's not a true um, way of recognizing the, the correct yield, but this is how it's come from the fishmonger. So we paid the price per kilo for this whole fish. So the fishmongers should have already taken that loss of weight into account. And we're, pacing, we're basically paying for our whole fish. So the principle still accounts with regards to working out a yield and working out cost for the fins. So we've got our whole fish here, we're gonna prepare it up. So remove any fins. Just because this can spike into you later on. And don't worry about the waste, the waste is all going to be calculated after we've removed the fillet. So all this here is quite dangerous if you have it on there. Spikes, they can cut you. So just remove that. Now we're starting to get a bit more of a, a usable part of the fish. Now, when you do your filleting, just remember that, look at it and look at the anatomy of the fish. We're trying to utilize as much yield as possible, which means we need to make sure we get right behind the head here and make sure we get as much of the wing as possible, okay? Now, if you cut far away from the, the head, you'll end up getting a poor yield. So it's really important that you go right behind here and get right in behind the head. And don't just do a straight cut, try and cut around the head so that you get really good yield. Likewise, when you focus on filleting it, get close to the bone, okay? So I'm using my firm knife first, get right behind the head. You can see I've got really just behind the eye here, bring this down and across through the wing. Now the wing has a big bone there, so there's no point trying to navigate that. Get behind the head, hold your hand nice and flat. Now you can do this from the edge of the board if you feel more comfortable. I'm gonna do it this way so you can see on camera. Now, I'm gonna make sure my hand is kept as clear from the fish as possible, but we're trying to run the knife directly against the spine. So the bones run this way. Now the important part of this is when you insert the knife, it's nice and sharp, but it must go, blade must go this way so it runs along the bones. If you go in with your knife this way, any sort of movement in the knife will give you an uneven fillet. You're using the bone to guide you. Okay, so we're using a sharp knife. And see how my knife is running along that spine? All the way down to the base, okay? Now I can start to let the bones guide me. Now hit the spine in the middle, and you just go down about halfway, or close to the tail. I'm gonna put the knife in, go over the fillet, bring the knife out the other side. Can you see that? Holding the head, I'm just gonna bring my knife down the fillet like this. That allows me to have some element of freedom to get in here, and just carefully pull the fillet away from the fish. There's sometimes some strong bones here, so you can just hold the tail. Snap those bones. You should be able to get in behind the head. That's one fit, but we need to tidy this up. Okay, so I'll just put this to one side for now. We'll come back to that. Next side. Remember, we're going behind the head as much as possible. Some people choose to remove the head here to get a nice even cut. 
as long as you're nice, nice and sharp, you should still be able to run along the spine. Just bear in mind, obviously, this fish has been gutted and scaled, so it's a little bit easier for us to maneuver. We need to remember to do that if our fish arrives, we've got some scales inside. Snapping those last bones, and then we've got a nice fillet. So, very little left on the fish. There is obviously the cheek of the fish that has some flesh inside. On a big fish, this can be removed. Cod's cheek is really nice, you know, but on a smaller fish, it's very little there. In this recipe, we won't really use this, so this is just for you to visually see that that's available for you. So, big fish, make sure you take this out, it's really nice. Okay, the wings could be taken off. On a big fish, you could just do this. Particularly in Asian foods, these are often floured, deep fried, as like a, a fish version of spare ribs, but we've got very little, by the way, of meat left. On certain fish, you can even scrape the bones. You know, once you scrape the bones, this can be used in fish cakes, mousses, even, even clarified fish broth, you can use that, okay? But primarily our focus is now going to be finishing these fillets into portions and plateable fillets, then recording the weight of the fillets. Okay, so our next video, I'm gonna have a bit of a tidy up, remove all the scales off my board and clean and portion my fillets. Okay, so we've got our two fillets here, and of course it's got the rib cage still intact, it's a little bit messy, we need to tidy these up so they look really good on a plate. So, no scales. We're gonna take our bendy knife. If you haven't got a bendy knife, just work carefully around these bones. Running it against the bone to remove these away with that. We still need to tidy this up and I'm gonna show you that shortly. So cooking them wouldn't be the end of the world, but we've also got some pin bones here we need to remove. So we just need to be careful we don't damage the flesh too much. bones are out. Now to make this fillet presentable, I'll finish that finish that fillet shortly, but to make this presentable, make sure when you when you're presenting fish or cutting fish as neat and tidy, we don't saw at the flesh. We use a sharp knife and we just trim away the edges in one fell swoop. So all we're doing is just tidying these edges up so it's nice and presentable. That's a beautiful fillet that's been boned. When this cooks up, it'd be nice to look at and there won't be any bones nice to eat. So at this point, you can just carefully press the flesh, score the fish. That's not only for presentation, but stops it curling up, cooks evenly, and it gets nice and crispy. So that's one fillet. I'm gonna repeat this with the second fillet, and I'm gonna show you the final um, products from this fish. If you didn't have pliers at home, is there any other way to take the bones out? Uh, with your fingers, they're small, but you really kind of do need pliers. Or I'll show you what you can do here. You can just 
identify where the bones are and do an incision either side. That's the worst case scenario. Of course, your yield then will fall, so you're going to lose some flesh on there, but there's nothing worse than having bones in your fish. And you'll lose some presentation as well if you Definitely, cut yeah. it like that. Definitely. In this instance, we're just going to show you how to do that. And you can see the fish is nowhere near as tidy as that first one. Okay? Okay, chefs, for our first dish, we first of all need to talk about our fish. So our protein is here. Now, I've broken it down into sort of the usable parts. So I've got my two fillets, my two cheeks, and we've got our fish wings here. Now we're not going to cook them. You could if you like. Uh, this one, you can use it for stock if you wish. But we need to focus on our fillets. Our, our, our first dish is snapper fillets. Now, at this point, we must, must remember to take our whole fish weight and we then record our filleted weight. Because remember, if we cook it, it's going to lose moisture, it's going to not be an accurate yield. So at this point, I want you to go away and make sure you've weighed your whole fish as it was when it arrived and your fillets, filleted, ready to cook. So you should have a whole weight minus your fillets would give you your wastage, okay? Don't try and measure the wastage because it won't be 100% accurate. You've got your usable part here, that's all you need to worry about. So whole fish and weigh your fillets. Keep those two recorded for me, please, okay? Now, I'm gonna put this away in the fridge until it's ready to cook. The first part of our mise en place is we need to make a tapenade. This can be made and set aside, ready for our fish cooking, okay? So I've got some oregano leaves, we've got some garlic, fennel, fronds or dill in this instance, black olives, paprika, balsamic vinegar. Now you may not need all the balsamic vinegar, the first thing we're going to do is start with chopping our herbs and garlic. So I've got a microplane, alternatively you can mince it with a knife. I like to microplane it so it's nice and fine. That can go into our bowl and then come to these later. But first of all, we're going to chop our olives, and these need to be chopped really fine. So, in this instance, we need to chop making sure there's no stones in them. Avoid really having to use a blender here because this principle tapping out classically is really finely chopped. So take the opportunity, a nice sharp knife, keep chop, chop, chop. Once I've chopped these nice and fine, I'm going to put them in with my garlic, chop some herbs, chop the oregano, add in the paprika, and then I'm only going to add in the balsamic vinegar very slowly so it binds it, okay? So this will take me probably five minutes to get this nice and fine. We'll return in a moment, and I'll show you how to mix it up now together. Okay, chefs, so I've got my mise en place ready, and you're going to need to have your mise en place ready for this because we're going to cook the fish and the vegetables in a short space of time. Now, as I said before, we're just going to return to my tapenade. You can see here I've got my chopped olives, garlic, herbs and paprika. We don't need to add salt, but we just need to bind this a little bit of balsamic vinegar and olive oil. So you probably won't need all the vinegar that it says in the recipe. Just a splash. Splash of olive oil. Again, we don't need to add salt to this because the olives are quite salty, but we can put a little bit of pepper. Now there's our tapenade. That can just be set to one side. Now we're going to cook the fish now. We're going to cook the fish, rest the fish, and then quickly saute off or pan roast our vegetables. So here I've got a two centimeter dice of zucchini different colored capsicums and some cherry tomatoes. And these all cook differently. So we're probably gonna cook these first and then add in the cherry tomatoes just towards the end, okay? This must be ready before you start, so. Here's my fish, ready to go. Now, at home, you may not have a non-stick pan, so I'm gonna show you how to cook fish in a pan 
that's not non-stick. So if you have a look here, I've got a medium heat, not too high. We'll drop in some olive oil. Once our olive oil, we'll drop a nice clean piece of baking paper, being sure that this doesn't hang on the side of the pan because it can catch fire. A little bit more olive oil, and that basically gives you a non-stick surface. Okay. Now, with my fish, a pinch of salt across both sides. Just no black pepper as yet, okay? Now have your pan on a medium to high heat. We're gonna cook this fish 90% of the time on the skin side down. That's really quite important. You get a nice crispy skin. You just hold it there and you're gonna turn your heat down, okay? Now here I've got a tray with some paper I'm ready to rest my fish. We're going to use that same pan for roasting our vegetables. So at this point you just want to manage the heat in your pan carefully. Apply a little bit of pressure to keep the fish there nice and flat. I'm cooking here in olive oil. So you don't really want butter in here because it will burn before the fish gets crispy. And likewise, you may lose a bit of that nice crispy skin with butter. So you're going to turn the heat down and leave that nice and crispy on one side for a good two to three minutes. So you start to see the temperature or the cooking of the fish come most of the way at the side. In the meantime, I've made myself a little salad of leaves. That's going to go with my fish. Now you'll probably get some rocket at home. Okay? This you can dress with a little bit of lemon juice and some olive oil garnish your fish. Now at this point I'm going to put my plate on the floor just for 20 seconds or so. You can see how just carefully managing that pan, the fish is cooking most of the way through. Okay? When we turn this, pretty much you can turn the heat off and let the residual heat cook the fish. Okay? And again we're making sure our fish has no bones, we're not moving it around, we're not covering the butter, we're just gently letting that skin get crispy. Almost there. At this point now, I can probably just turn it gently and carefully. And then, and then turn the pan off. That residual heat will cook that fish. Okay. I'm going to let that sit there for two or three minutes. Then I'm going to remove the fish, rest it, quickly roast off my vegetables and plate. I'll come back to that in a moment. Okay, so I've got my pan, I've cooked my fish. That's just resting here, and that's going to stay warm for the next about four or five minutes. Got a nice hot pan now, so I've just removed the paper out of here. I'm using the same pan. We're just going to go in with our vegetables now. We're going to pan roast these. Careful not to splash yourself. We want to keep these nice and firm. We don't want to cook them to death. So pepper. Olive oil. And just remembering to have your extraction on at home. Yep. Now we're going to go in with the cherry tomatoes. You may not need all this for these two pieces of fish. This of course is just a demonstration. This doesn't take very long at all. So. Nearly there. We're going to keep some element of al dente to it. So about there, pretty much. 
And because we don't want oil all over our plate, we'll nice clean dish. Heat once they cook onto the kitchen paper. Now we're ready to bring our elements together and plate. Okay, so now we're gonna we'll plate. We've got our mise en place ready. So there's pre-cooking mise en place and then in an, any typical restaurant, all the elements are brought to the pasta together at the same time. And as a cook, you should probably get used to doing this because it's good practice. I've got my little salad of herbs here, and just a little bit of lemon, a splash of olive oil, salt and pepper. Have that ready dressed. So this is just a little bit of salad of herbs just to freshen it up. Now, this is not a fine dining dish. We're just gonna put some vegetables across here. And again, you won't need them all. Bring your fish. And it's still hot, which is good. Now, don't forget we've got our tapenade, and this is quite strong, so we don't need lots of it. We do a little quenelle of the tapenade on top of the fish. And remember, we've got our salad of herbs here, so this is just going to give some freshness across the top of those vegetables. Clean plate. And remember, we don't want our plate smoking hot because we'll we kill all that salad. Finally, nice wedge of lemon. That's pretty much it. Making sure our plate is nice and neat and tidy. You're going to take a journal entry of that. From, so you, that's your first sort of phase of having a whole fish, breaking it down to a nice little dish, neat and tidy. So what I want here is nice, neat plating, not an overfilled plate. Nicely cooked fish and a good garnish, okay?